Hi, I've been asked if I can put a video together to help somebody with creating a livery for the Cowan Simulations Airbus H130. Uh, so I thought I'd do it as a generic video that anybody would be able to use and reference just the way I do things. Hopefully it'll prove useful for some people. I'm just going to start with a fresh design and show you how I do things. So let's get started. You can see in the background I've got Blender opened already with the paint kit from Cowan Simulations. Uh, this folder here is actually the Cowan Simulations H130 folder. Josh does a great job. He includes the paint kits with all of his aircraft, uh, which is a lot better than a lot of other developers do. Uh, as you can see, his paint kit has all of the files that you need. There's the Blender file. It would be good if he did them as PSDs for Adobe or PNGs, I think it is, if you're doing paint.net. Um, but yeah, you can work with a PNG, that's that's not a drama. The only complaint I have, or the issue I have really with the H130 is that it has so many files for the for the livery, whereas some of the other aircraft are only one or two files, which are, makes it a lot easier when you're trying to do things in Blender. Um, but anyway, we will move on. So I've already extracted that to another drive. Uh, I have my working folder, which I will show you. Um, so this is my working folder. What I normally do is I will set up a reference section. So the aircraft that we're looking to do for this tutorial will be this design, mainly because the the, the points that um, I've been asked to cover specifically are doing lines and curves. Uh, but I'll, I'll run through some of the other common things that or common issues or useful tips that I, I have with working between Blender. I tend to work between Blender and Photoshop. Um, I just find Photoshop's good for cleaning up little sections, whereas Blender on its own can be a bit rough. Uh, but we'll, we'll cover that. Let's have a look. So that's that's the aircraft we're going to do. I'll make an image full screen just so we can see. So we can see we've got some straight lines. We've got some curves. So it'll be a good one to use as, as an example. Uh, so let's get on with it. Uh, so the first thing we want to do with Blender is just clean up our menus at the top here. We don't need all of these for doing liveries. We don't need modeling. So if you right click and then go delete, right click on sculpture, we don't need that. So the ones we want to keep, we want to keep layout, UV editing, texture paint and shading. So the other ones, just to get rid of them, just to make it easier uh, and a bit tidier. So we've got rid of those. Okay, so this is a fresh open of the Blender file. Uh, so there are a few little issues that we need to clean up. So you can see here that there's no textures actually assigned to the landing gear, for example. Um, and you can tell that by up the top here, there's no list of any actual file names. Um, and we can select different sections. So these are all, when we click on these, these will all be separate or, or yeah, will basically all be different parts of the PSD. I'm just going to bring up, no, that's not the one we wanted, that one. And you can see I've already set this up. So we've got the paint kit. That's one that I had previously finished. And this is the original files. So the best thing to do is work with the files that Josh has already given us. And what we want to do is link these files here to this Blender file. And that gives us a template or a basis to work with. So rather than creating a fresh image for each section, um, we're, we're going to use those. We could, we could do that. We could just go to UV editing and new. And from here, we can create whatever name we want, uh, whatever size we want. Just remember, so you work working in 1024. So if you want it at a 2K image size, it'll be 2048. 4K image size, it would be four times 1024. 8K would be eight times 1024. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You obviously want that as the highest possible resolution. So either generally try to do it as 4K, uh, I think which from memory is at 4096. Let me just confirm. Four times by two. I am hopeless at math, so I'm going to do the cheat way. Four times one. Oh, helps if I can. Don't mind me. 
I can't math. That's because my calculator is not on calculator. It's on weight calculations. So 4 times 1024 is, yeah, 4096. So I was actually right. Um, so we would put that as 4096 pixels by 4096 pixels. And that would give us a 4K resolution image, which gives you good straight edges, good curves. Uh, if you want to go better again, you can go 8K. Um, you could do, and then you can choose whatever base color you want. So for example, if you wanted to do white, we just select that as white and we go, okay, actually we will, no, I'm going to do it the way I'd recommend. So you can do it that way. I'm not going to, because that's not how I would recommend doing it. Uh, okay. What we want to do, let's just have a look here. So we can see over here that these are the different sections we have, and there's no file here linked into base color. So we need to fix that. So the first thing we're going to do is going to go add texture, image texture, and plonk that down there. We then link by cleft clicking there and going across to base color. So here again, we could do the same thing as what we had the option with UV editing. We can create a new file or we could just open a file. So in this case, we're going to open a file uh, and we're in original files, which is where we want to be. Now, what we want to do is double check that we're opening the correct file. So here you can see we're on fuse large back, which is there, fuse large back. Now, the question is which one? It should be fuse large back top. If you hover over that, you'll see it says value H130 fuse back top. So here we go. H130 fuse back top. ALB. Now ALB is the files that you need. The other ones would be a comp file, which is for doing your metallics. Uh, if you want to make something look metallic or chrome or paint, you can adjust it there. Um, so don't worry about comps. I can cover that in another, another topic or another video if anybody's interested. But for now, we're just going to select that one. And you'll see that straight away, we've got the actual color and the paintwork from that PNG file. Uh, so we're now going to select the next area. So we're looking fuse back left on this side. So same thing, we go add texture, image texture, plonk that down, link color there to base color, open, and it was fuse back left, and that one's done. Now, I'm not covering things about moving around or manipulating how to move the models around. That's you, There's loads of videos on YouTube on how to do that. Uh, if, you, you know, if you do need help, certainly reach out to me, but I'm not going to cover how to do that in this video. Uh, you know, the, as I said, there's loads out there. Okay, so let's have a look at the tail boom. So no, nothing there. Add. I may actually pause the video so we don't, sit here repeating. Uh, just for now, I'll do this one. And then after that, I'll I'll pause it so you don't have to sit here and watch me do all of them. Oh, so you can see I've selected the wrong one there. So I've selected tail, which will actually be this section here. So that's easily fixed. We just go back there to open image and we are looking for boom. So it's that one. There you go. You can see that's fixed it. So if you do make a mistake, don't worry too much about it. It's easily fixed. Uh, sorry if my voice is a bit ra raspy. Raspy. <clears throat> um, I am not used to talking on microphones or doing videos. I haven't done one for a very long time. Uh, we will do just the tail. Since we've already got that file there, we won't need to open it, I don't believe. Let's have a look. So if we go image texture there, color across the base color. If we now just click on the down arrow on the little picture icon, we'll see that we've already got the tail there. So we just click that and that's done. We don't need to reopen that. So if you do make a mistake, it's easily fixed and you can just reuse that. You don't need to delete or do anything snazzy. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna pause the video now and I'll come back in a moment once I've completed opening all of the PNG files. Okay, welcome back. So you can see now that we have all of the PNG files linked onto the model. 
So that's all of these files here. And that gives us a basis to start from. Uh, so now we can get to painting and doing what we want. Now, obviously, the first thing we've got is if we are doing the this particular airframe, the majority of this airframe is red. Now, what I would typically do is I would open that in Photoshop just so I can get the exact color that I need for that red or as close as possible to it. Uh, let's do that. If you've got a different program that you use, or, yeah, that, that's not a drama. Just Photoshop is something I'm used to working with. I used to use it as a photographer a long time ago, and I still find that just natural for me to, to use. Okay, so we're going to hit B for brush, hold down Alt, pick a neutral area where there's not no shine or shadow on it, and that'll give us the, the eyedropper, and then we left click. So we can then come over to the panel over here, I'll bring that up because it's hiding. And we can see our hex value down here. So I'm just going to right click and copy that. And I don't need that anymore, so I'm going to hide that. Now we can go back to Blender, bring out a texture paint. We want that on up here. Oh, who's messaging me? And what we're going to do, now we don't have to be basically our base color when we're painting it on the model. We don't have to be as precise as you see, like it doesn't matter if we go over these lines. And in some instances, it's actually good to go over the lines and I'll, I'll explain that as I get to painting. Uh, so, okay, at the moment, what we're looking to do is we're going to paint this tail boom here. Let's look at our reference image again and see if that shroud over the top there is black, which it is. So we wanna leave that as black. Uh, now that shroud is actually this section here on the side. So we want to leave those. So the easiest way, there's two different ways you can do it. So the first thing we do, we need to make sure in layout that it is selected and highlighted as such. And you do that just by left clicking on the area that you want. You then go to texture paint and okay, over on the left hand side, now we'll actually use the black color. Left click in there, we're going to go to hex. And we're just going to paste our hex value in there that we copied out of Photoshop. And that gives us our red. Scaling your brush uh, is quite easy. Hold down F and then you can move your mouse to slide and that'll adjust the size of your brush to make it so much easier if you're doing large sections. So for example, I can just do that. Now, straight away, I can see an issue what I've done and that's fall off. You want to change fall off to constant because you'll see it softens the edges if you don't. Uh, and what you want with your livery is obviously a nice crisp line. So I'm just gonna quickly, there's two different ways you can paint. One is you can paint directly onto the model on the texture paint side. And the other is you can paint. Now, obviously if I do that here, I'm just gonna lift my finger off the button there. If I paint here, it's gonna paint over that black and we don't want to do that. You can see on the left hand side there that it's painted over that. Now there's two different ways we could do this. We could just do it all here quickly uh, and then just come back here and paint black on these sections. And that would probably be, yeah, actually, you know, that kind of would be one of the quicker ways. So let's just do that. The other option is you can just come over on the left hand side and you can just paint the red here. Now the advantage with doing it this way even though you're going over the lines, that makes no difference. But the best reason for doing it that way is that if you paint just on the model on this right hand side, it only paints sections that it can see. So you'll find that even though we've painted, okay, let's have a look. So paint it there, paint it there. You can see up underneath, there's still gonna be black areas. So you will miss areas that are hidden or out of sight of the uh, brush based on the angle of your painting. So that is one thing you need to be aware of is that you may have little bits and pieces missing. Whereas if you do it this way, and the same thing with edges, 
you may find that on these edges, you may get little areas that are still showing the original paints or, you know, for example, if it's white or, or blue in this instance. Um, so that in some instances, especially with some of the models, by going outside of the edge, it will actually make sure to cover all of that extra area. Um, this, it's, it's in some of the models, I think specifically the MD500, there is an area on the back of the engine cowling that if you just painted it by painting on the right hand side here, it would look funny. There'd be lines and things in it that are missed because they're not actually shown on the model as such. And the way to fix that is to go in into the actual PNG, into the image on the left hand side and paint a little bit outside the lines. And that will actually fix that error up. Now that took me a little bit to work that one out uh, and it was very painful trying to find out why I was getting these weird looking streaks in my paint scheme. Um, but that's that's what it is. Um, okay, what we're going to do is I need black. I'm just going to change that again. Come back here. Increase my brush size by pressing F. I'm just going to paint all of that black again. And there we go. So that's nice and easy. Now we can see here. So for example, there's a section there. So if we zoom right in somewhere here, it's not that bit. It is going to be red up there, there. Uh, that's not actually quite black, is it? So let's just do that. That, there it is. So that was that little bit there. So that's the advantage of painting on the left-hand side as well and not just relying on the right-hand side. So the reason is, you and you do it between, I use Blender, as I said, when I first started the video, but I also use Photoshop as a cleanup. Even if I can do majority of my work here in Blender, I will still generally do a tidy up in Photoshop because you may find there's just one pixel or two pixels or occasionally just dots that you've missed uh, that you can just quickly fix in Photoshop without having to to go back and um, you know stuff around in in Blender. Um, okay, so we're just going to do the tail. So same thing. We'll do the same thing here. We'll just paint it. Oh, on the that's the wrong paint color. So we need to fix that. If you tap tap X, it will cycle between the two colors that you have your primary or secondary. And I'm just going to paint it quickly. This way, apart from my computer slowing down. So you see there, it missed that bit. And on the, that side, you can see there are bits that it's missed. Okay. Wait for the computer to catch up again. There we go. Now, if we zoom in now and have a look. So it kind of looks good, but then you'll see sections like that. Now, you can come in and fix them that way just by painting, but that doesn't always work. So the way around that is just come over here and again, you'll see it missed that line. Just paint outside the edges and that makes sure you get all parts of the model. So you're not missing anything. Uh, and the same, I don't know where those bits are, but they're obviously there and it doesn't matter if they're, we need everything red. So let's just paint that red. And that's the stabilizer done. Okay, moving on, let's do the tail boom. So the tail now, so by default, this model has white blades. Let's have a look and see. Yeah, it could be, could be white, could be black. I think they'd be black based on the color of the rest of the helicopter. So what we're going to do, so the blue sections will do as red, as and then the other sections, rather than the white, we're going to do as black. So let's do those first. And the easiest thing is I'm just going to paint on this side. That should be your fins. That should be the hub. I'm just careful not to get sections we don't. Oh, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you do get those, you just repaint over them make things as tidy as possible first time around. Uh, black oh no, that's the 
tail strike protection. So we want that as red. So we hit X again. And we could zoom in. That'll make things a bit easier. And that's all red. That's all red there. Red, 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 red. Red everywhere. There, same there, same there. So you can see, despite the fact that we're looking to get a good looking model, you don't have to be exact with painting on this side because it will actually look good when it turns out. So I'm just going to color all that in. Make sure we get all the sections. Uh, that hub, yeah, we're going to paint that black and leave that. Uh, I don't know if I was meant to paint. Uh, it's got some blue on it, so we will paint that. And we go. And okay, just a bit of blue, just a bit of blue. X to go back to black. Paint it black. Okay, so let's have a quick look. So we can see just by doing that, we've missed a section there. So that's on the blades. So if we look up here and you can see straight away, this one's easy. Black, 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 gone. So that's our tail section done. Nice and easy. So the rudder hub's red, that looks good. I'm happy with that. Uh, that's black up the top. Which one's that gonna be? Easiest way to find out is if we hit X, hit red. Wait for the computer to catch up. Now you find that it does that when the brush is very large, it will take a lot more out of your computer. So if we shrink the brush down, it makes it a lot easier and we can get the whole thing. Uh, and you'll see down here, so we'll just paint all of that red. And that will cover that. Now I'm not sure why it's done black there. Oh, sorry, red there and red there. So we're just going to touch that up. Yep. Uh, hang on. No. Okay. That's that section, that section there. Uh, oh, that's that. Okay. So we'll fix that. We want that as black. And oh, that's a hole. So that's why that still looks red. That is not, so where is that? And this is just a bit of tidy up. Oh, that's the shaft inside. I'm just looking black, black, black. So you can see there's still tiny little bits. You can manipulate the camera around just to try and find everything. Uh, and sometimes it's just a bit of a bit of work just to tidy it up and make it look better. And generally, people aren't going to notice it, but I like to make it as good a model as possible. Um, okay, I'm happy with that. I think. Oop, nope. Do don't know where that shaft is, but that's all right. You're not going to see that, so we're not going to worry about it. Okay, so the main fuselage. So let's have a look. We're going to go back to layout, select the top, and we want red, so we're going to go X. And we're just going to paint that on.
So I will put chapters as well, just to cover what section. So you can go directly to, you know, if you, you don't want to see this part, you can go to the part that interests you or that is relevant to what you're learning. Uh, I'll add those in. I'll have to work out how to do that, but I know that can be done. And okay, so that's a bit of a rough job, but you can see there's still a bit of blue there. And you can see on the left hand side, so just painting it like that on the right hand side, you'll see that it misses lots just because of the camera angle when you're painting. So you have to come in and manually go and find all these sections. Or as I said, you come over here and paint outside the lines and it will get everything there. And that just makes things so much quicker and tidier. So let's just do that. That'll finish that off for us. So what I will do, once I finish this section, I'm going to pause the video again and I'll finish off painting the rest of the fuselage base color with the red. And then we'll look at what we do from there to say, for example, we're going to do the black areas and I'll cover that section. Okay, that's all done. And that looks a lot neater and tidier. Uh, okay, I'll pause it now. I'm just going to finish off these other sections and I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, I've come back to you. I just wanted to point out as a side note, there is another option for getting all of this model red and that is using your favorite uh, photo or sorry, your fa favorite editing software. So Photoshop, Paint.net, GIMP, whatever you use uh, and just filling the actual image file with red. So rather than coloring in like I'm doing, you're just basically putting red in the whole image. Um, that's even easier and that is quicker. Uh, so that's certainly a valid way of doing things. And you know, obviously it depends on you know, what color your model is. Is majority of it one particular color or not? Um, so yeah, I just wanted to point that out because there are multiple ways of doing, doing things. You don't have to just do it the way I show you here. Okay, I'm just going to pause, I'll finish this off and I'll come back. Okay, I'm back with you. So you see we've now got our base color down on the helicopter, on the airframe. We do want to make sure that we save our work as we go along, just in case anything happens. Blender does crash on occasion. Well, it does for me at least. I don't know if it does for you. We're just going to save this and I don't want to replace the original, so I'm just going to call it something different. Underscore helps if I don't have keyboard dyslexia underscore training save and then that way we've got our base model to work with the other thing okay so so you can see I have I've, I've been pretty rough doing it but on the actual airframe on the right hand side on the preview it looks perfect and that's exactly how we want it so we are now ready to look at What's the next stage we want to tackle? Now let's just move that across. We don't need that that big. Since we're now going to do a little bit more precise work. So now an area that we will cover is stenciling, um, doing lines and curves. You want to work on one of the prime axes. You don't want to be trying to do curves on that side, for example, on, on that angle, for example, it would just, it makes it harder to replicate to the opposite side. So you want to work generally, for example, on the Z axis, oh, correction, the X axis. And then you just click that again to reverse that to the other side. There are a couple of tricks you can do uh, with doing lines or work on, on, a, on a model. You can actually just turn symmetry on. Now the problem, I will show, we'll show you the problem that that can cause. So if we turn mirror on here for under symmetry, just clicking on the X axis. Say for example, I want to, let's just go back to there. Make that a little bit smaller and we're going to switch to black. Okay. So for example, if I'm painting a line on this side, that with symmetry on it should put that on the opposite side now on this model it doesn't and that's part of the issue with having 
uh, basically having so many files. And it's just the way this model's been designed on a lot of the other aircraft that Josh does. Using symmetry there will actually work. Uh, and if you paint one side, it will paint the other. So doing lines and things, that works perfectly. Logos, not so much because, oh, say, for example, text. If you had symmetry turned on, the text would be mirrored and reversed on the opposite side. Uh, so it wouldn't look right. So when you're doing stenciling for logos and things, you want to turn sim mirroring off or turn symmetry off and just make sure you do them on both sides. Uh, I'll come to that. As I said, I will we'll cover that topic. Um, okay, let's, let's have a quick look at our reference photo again. So we can see here we've got a bit of a curve at the front and then it curves up around the top of the fuselage. So or actually even the back. So let's work on this back se section. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so it's where the tail boom comes up. It then goes around as black. That's pretty easy to do. So, okay, so we're going to make sure we're on just the x-axis. We're looking directly on. Zoom in on the back here. So we know we want to come in up around there. And how far in did it come? Came in past that first panel. And just roughly where the, the masthead is. So first panel. So it's going to come into about there. So it's actually a fairly, fairly decent area that is black. Okay, what we want to do, we're going to click up here on stroke. Click in the stroke method. We're going to go to curve. So lines and curves work the same way. Um, curves are a bit more complex in that you're working with multiple points and, and different angles. Now, I'm used to doing this just without thinking about it. So just give me a second. Yep, that's right. Okay, so we need to hold down the left control key and its right mouse button. Hold the right mouse button and drag. And that will give us our base point, our starting point, and our angle lines. So I don't know, that's not the correct term for it. So it, just, that's what I'm going to call it. So that's our first one. We then let go of the right mouse button while still holding control down. We're going to come out to the next point in our curve, which is going to be out here. So same thing. We hold the mouse button down and then drag it. And you'll see, so we've got a bit of a curve there. You can let go. And now if we right click, we can drag these at anchors. So we can lengthen them. You'll see what exactly what it does. But we want to keep it fairly short here because we want it straight along the top. So I'm going to bring that down a bit. And we'll keep that one straight there. Now our other point is going to be down here. And let go of the mouse. We're just going to drag it down a bit. So oh, dragging these anchor points is all right mouse button. So don't click left mouse button. Uh, okay, let's look at the shape there. See if we're pretty happy with it. Now, I don't close these off as paths. To be honest, I don't know how to. Um, in Photoshop, that's what you would do is you would close that off as a complete path. <clears throat> but what I do is I use that to basically draw the, draw the initial line. I'm going to do that as one pixel. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But I just want to check our reference photo. Yeah, so you can see it's flatter down the bottom and then it starts to curve up and it's more rounded at the top here. So let's have a look. How can we fix that flatter down the bottom like so? Um, but, okay, so oops, hang on, I'll undo that. Undo that, shift, oh, I'm doing control, shift, Oh, what did I do? No. Okay, edit, redo. Where's my color gone? Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. That's all right. Okay. Control Z. Why are you not undoing? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let's just hang up. Delete, delete, delete. Okay, try that again. 
So I'm holding control and I'm left clicking and I'm dragging. So that's going to give us another anchor point to work with. Just so, okay, let's bring that one back. So we can flatten that out a bit there. Flatten that out a bit there. And up here, we can bring that curve up a bit more. Let's have a look. Actually, that kind of looks all right. Uh, we do want a bit more. So let's add another one. Oops, cancel. Oops. Delete. And another one up here. No, that's not going to work. Okay. Because need that one there. Okay. <laughs> okay, we can work with that. Doesn't matter. We can play around. Uh, actually, if we move that one further that way, that will flatten that for us. There we go. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so now we've got the shape that we want for our curve, and that's going to be the basis of our black area here in this section. Hold down Control and left click on the lines that you've created. Now the catch is you have to make sure that you actually have that section created, a uh, selection selected, or that area selected I should say, which I don't. So I need to come up here and click on the cowling at the back of the engine. Now if I hold down left control and left mouse click, you see that it's painted on this side. Now it hasn't done this section here because that's on a different uh, different image. So we need to make sure that we select that section as well. And this is where mirroring can sometimes work, uh, but doesn't always. So I've got mirroring selected. Let's see if it does work. So I don't think it has. Let's have a look if we reverse it. No. So you see mirroring hasn't worked on this because it's a separate, it's a completely different image file. Now we can make mirroring work, but we just have to keep in mind that it hasn't. So to make it work, we leave the viewpoint on this side so we can see, because if we tried to reverse it and it doesn't actually reverse the shape that we've made. So we need to keep it that side, but we want to paint the opposite side. So we come into layout, go to the opposite side and select it. Come back to texture paint, left click, and oh, sorry, left control and left click. And now we have our paint on the other side. So we now have our complete, complete guide basically, that I'll call that. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go back to stroke, back to space, increase the size. I'm gonna zoom in and it's just gonna paint between the lines. Uh, and again, same thing, it won't work because I don't have it selected. So here, and again, you can paint over it on this side if you want, but I find this is easy to do on the model as a starter, because you can I'm just basically trying not to ruin our, our line. So I do only do small sections when I'm happy with it, let go of the mouse button, just in case I by accident go like that, I'm not losing that whole line because I did the whole thing as one stroke. So I'm just going to undo that. I'll just do a bit at a time. Let go. A bit more. Fix that section I missed. Okay. And I'm going to be a bit more liberal up here with it. Increase our brush size. So you can see, sometimes it will, even though you're looking at a, a flat surface, you will miss areas. If you find that that happens, the way to get around that, just change the angle that you're looking at the image from and just click on that section. And that will generally fix those areas and fill in the spots that you missed. Um, so yeah, you, it does happen. So even down here, you've got single dots. And these are things that I would generally just do a quick once over before I go too far with the model. 
uh, or I would fix them up later in Photoshop when I'm working on the, the, the final results. Um, okay, so this is going to work on mirroring because this cowling here is all on the same image. But when we go to the next section, you'll find that it won't work. Uh, so I'm just going to fill that in. We want all of this black. Now you see up the back here, we're just going to change that kind of is in my way, get out of the way, tail boom. Okay, that'll do. Now to fix a section like this, you see it hasn't come right away, right across. So in this instance, we'll just go line, F to change our brush size. And you just want the brush size around the size of that line. And we're just going to draw. So left click to draw our line. Straight across like that. And that's done. Come back down. We're going to change that back to space. See, we've missed a couple of sections there. We fill those in. And even though we did it fine on the other side, it still missed bits on this side. So these are things you just need to be careful of and tidy up. Uh, that's looking all right, apart from this section here. Actually, let me just do my hand. Oop. Now, I didn't want that to happen there. Careful, because I don't want to really, even that section, I'm just going to change that because I don't want that black there. I just want it down to the cowling as such. Uh, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So we're just going to move on to this next section. And this is an example again of where the mirroring or symmetry won't work. So, okay, we go back to layout. We're going to select the front, the, the upper panel, on the left hand side there, come back to texture paint, go to black, and we're just going to paint this in. Oh, can't believe people are messaging me. Nobody ever messages me. Okay, so you can see. There is a bit of black down there as well. We don't want that. Let's just fix that up quickly. Down there and there. Okay, that looks all right. Apart from, zoom in, you'll see we've got these spots we missed. So just make sure we're all in black. And again, that one wouldn't paint, so we just change the angle and that will usually allow you to fix those little errors. Uh, the other thing we want to do is down here, and this is a case of where the, it helps to paint outside the borders. So where we've got this little piece here, this is going to be this section. Now, if we zoom in, you see the model actually comes further out than what we can physically see here. So if I get my brush down a little bit with the F key, if I paint in here, Paint down there, and this is probably going to be the other side. Uh, where is that? Why is that not filling in? I can paint there, that's all right. Oh, that's down there. Okay, so that's the top bit there. It's just a bit of experimenting. So we'll just do that. Okay, so down here. Oh, wrong section. Doesn't have to be precise because, as I said, you're not going to really see that. Come back here. We're just going to try and tidy that up a little bit. 
If anybody's looking that close, good luck, Tom. Okay, so we had symmetry on, but it didn't paint this side, as I said, because that's top left, and this is top right. It's a separate image file, so symmetry is not going to work there. So we'll just turn that off. I'm going to go back to layout, over to that side, back to texture paint, and manually paint that one in ourselves. I've actually done quite a few models now with liveries. Um, just in over the school holidays, I work as a school bus driver. And so we I had six weeks over the Christmas break and basically got into learning how to do this all from scratch uh, with the help of a few YouTube videos. None of them really were the be all and end all. Uh, so I had to teach myself a lot of it and the ins and outs I've worked out over the the last six months or so, oh, actually, yeah, pretty much seven months. And that also led into doing uh, other add-ons like airports. So I've done 80 add-ons that I've released on flightsim.to, which is pretty happy with. Um, just a shame it doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> As my wife tells me every time, it's like, why don't you get paid for this? I don't know. Um, anyway, okay, there is our black section. So let's have a look at that compared to our model. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Not perfect. Could be a bit more curved, but again, uh, do it yourself. You can make it perfect. Um, I'm happy with that and I'm going to stick with that one. So the next section I'm going to show you is just doing the curves on the front here. Uh, now let's have a look again. This is going to be a bit of a pain because we need to select multiple sections. So okay, let's go back, work from the left-hand side. And, yep, that's right. Go back to texture paint, we're on black. Now on the H130, there is a line, inner lining here, which is already black. That must be on a mirror, or it's on a separate file. So you already do have a baseline. Um, that is black and I, I didn't figure that out until one of the, yeah, until I was actually doing my own model. Uh, so that's handy. You don't need to, if you just want a trim that looks black, it's already there. You don't need to redo it. But in this case, we want this whole section to be black uh, from the curve on the image like such. And we do need to look at, okay. So from the door, it goes forward. Black, 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 black. So it's just a bit in front. So it goes forward, up over the handle, and then it kind of goes up that way and then curves up. Okay, that gives me an idea of what we're working with. So we're going to do a similar thing to what I did to do this back section. When you're doing a new curve, now you can either reuse that. Um, I just find it easier just to go curve and then you're going to add a new paint curve, draw curve, and that gives us a blank, blank curve to start with. Okay, so we were just in front of the door is our base point. And left control, left mouse button, hold it. Take us up on that angle. Oops, I just did another. More yeah, we want that. I think that's all right. Okay, and then we follow it up. We're gonna use that as our next point there. So we want a bit of a curve there just so it follows the line of the window or the yeah, or the windows. Bring that up a bit like such. And it's gonna curve up, so we're gonna put it at our next point at the top here. Drag that out like 
So, and then, okay, I'm going to come across to you. There. Okay, I'm happy with that. And we want to change our radius up here. Or we can just click and drag. So, sorry, hit F and then drag it down to one. So where radius is one pixel, which is going to be basically our outline for the windscreen here. Uh, left control, left click. Now you'll see it does look a bit odd when it comes to the top. That's because we're working on a three-dimensional model and not a flat image. It will still turn out all right, uh, but you can see it's only done the outline in that one section. So we need to, without changing any angles or anything like that, reselect the next section, left click, Actually, that's quite odd because it's done the upper section, which is what we... Oh, there we go. Okay. It must not have had that selection selected or that area selected. Okay. And that looks all right. Now, same thing because symmetry is not working. What we need to do is click on the layout. We're going to rotate that around so that we can select the other side. And same thing. So we're not moving our reference object from the bottom. Left click and left, left control and left click. And then the doors, left control. Did not work. And if we just rotate, that didn't work at all. Okay. Might be, I need to have symmetry on. Yes, we do. Okay. So let's quickly fix that up. You do need to have symmetry on, but you need to select the opposite face. For that to actually work. Now, if we rotate that around, we've got our outline. And that gives us a basis to start from. Okay, so we're going to quickly go back, change curve, space, and we're going to start painting this whole section. Uh, again, I'm not going to leave you here while we paint all of that. Uh, what do we have? Space, that's right. And it won't work because I'm on the other side of the airframe. So again, best thing to do here is work on the model and then clean up on the left hand side. Uh, so we're just going to quickly, oh, so you can see I've gone outside the line. I have to undo that and it's undone a fair bit because I just didn't do it in a small section. So that's why it's better to work in small sections rather than a whole lot. Uh, now we do, we're happy to have all that as. Letting go of the mouse button just so it doesn't keep painting when I don't need it to. Start a new section and I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back to you after I've either completed or done at least most of this. I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, I haven't quite finished doing the front section, but I come across an area where I can use this as an example of no matter what I do here, it always seems to have this corruption or striping in the paint scheme. Now I can fix those areas up, that's fine, but this section here can't do anything with, doesn't matter how much I paint over it. Um, so that's what I said about earlier. You're better to come across and see if you can locate where that bit is. So looking at the design. I can't quite see it. Now, if you're not, like me, if you can't find where it is, 
let's go back here. We're just going to change this to a bright color. And we'll paint that. And then if we, where is it? Why can we not see it? It's here somewhere. Let's go green. Aha. Okay. Now, the reason this occurs is you see these polygons are all very condensed. So whilst it's actually a big area on the physical model, in the mapping, in the UV mapping, it's a very small area. So if we paint that section there, you see that fixes that up straight away. And that's just, yeah, that's that's a modeling issue. It's not a major problem from a, a painting perspective, but it's something to be aware of because uh, you will come across these issues. Let's just fill those in. Now, so we need to tidy up a few of the other things and then we'll be done. So let's just, we're gonna do that from this side. Right, that's not going to ruin anything. If it does, just keep an eye on where you're painting on the left hand side. And if it does mess something up, you can just control Z to undo it and go back and fix it up. Um, okay, that's all fine, I think. Is it? Yeah, that's all right. That doesn't affect anything. <laughs> okay, we want to fix that to our original color. Okay, I'm going to pause again just to finish this off and then I'll come back and we'll continue on from there. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, I'm back. I finished off the basic. So we've got the basic colors on the airframe that we want. And if we compare that with the original image, so the other things we can do is our stripe. I will cover doing the stripe and then I think I'll actually leave that video or this video at that. Uh, if there's any interest and I get enough feedback in relation to doing other things such as stenciling uh, and logos and a bit more complicated work, uh, let me know and I'll consider doing a second video. Uh, but we'll do the yellow, oh, sorry, the yellow, the white stripe as well. And that'll at least finish off the basic design of this airframe, of, of this paint scheme. So same thing, we're going to level it out there. Uh, let's have a look at our image. And it comes up just below the handle. It still stays below the handle and then goes all the way back above the stabilizer. Uh, okay, that should be pretty easy. So again, we're going to do that with curves. So we're going to go stroke, curve. Now we want to change that to white. And to a new curve. And I need that reference again. Straight. And it's a bit of a sharp angle. So there's a bit of a gap between the fuselage. Now we want to make sure we're painting on the right section again. Uh, paint that there. At it correctly, so it's going to come up to there. So left control, right mouse button, and then let's have a quick look. It needs to be sharper than that. Okay, so. that that looks all right and so what I'm going to do here because I'm doing a stripe I'm going to do basically the same thing so I'm going to do it as guides so the edge lines 
So I'm going to do two curves. I'll do this line first, and then I'll do the next line, which will be the bottom line, or the, and then, um, then I'll paint in between. And I find that easier to work that way. There may be other ways of doing it. If there is, I'm not sure of them as of yet. Um, yes, if somebody knows, fill me in. But I, I find this way works for me and works quite well. Uh, now, I do have a bit of a problem. I can't see the back of the model. And that creates a problem because I need my stripe to go all the way. So let's move that over. Oops. And I botched it because I can't. How do I move it? Okay. up over the top of the stabilizer and it's not how's that line go there with the second handle goes below that one and it's just below that one above the other handle just below the door okay so it needs to come up here springs out towards there so let's take some of that curve out of it it doesn't look too bad when I take that a little bit higher. And that's going to look a bit odd because the angle changes too much. So let's fix that. Okay. And radius we want on one. part and select the tail oh no I haven't gone far enough have I Oop. got a bit carried away now we need to make sure we do it on the opposite side as well. So I'm just going to leave it there. Oh, my tail should be fine. That should be mirrored. And we can check that quickly. Now actually on the actual image, it does. It goes all the way through. Okay. Should have checked that first, shouldn't I? That's right, we can do that with a straight line. So don't worry about that just now. Because um, we just want to finish off the other side. Let's just check what it's done. Okay, so it's done that, which is fine. So we need to do that section. We need to do that section. We do need to do under, but that's easily fixed again. And let's just rotate that around, have a look. That looks, oh, yeah, it's not perfect. Because, see, the door handle, oh, actually, what's happened there? It's moved. What's moved? How has that happened? It doesn't line up. What have I done? So this is the problem with if you move the object on the other side, it's not right. So let's get rid of, oh, oh, well, well, too far. What happened? And this is why you save your project.
Okay. I'm just going to manually fix that section, I think, and the tail, because undo is not working. I'm going to go curve, going to go space. Do want it red. I'm just going to manually remove that line. And I'm going to manually remove the line on the tail because that's also wrong. Oh, actually, that kind of that does look all right. So that might be fine. Hang on, let's check. There. That looks all right, actually. That's all right. Okay. So it's just the front section. I've done something in moving the curve. This is not ideal to be trying to manually. It's what I would probably do in if I had done this. Well, I have done this. What I would do to fix this would be I'd scrap it and start again, I think. Start that whole line rather than trying what I'm doing here. I'm trying to line it up. And that's not going to work because it's out of whack. Uh, bugger. Okay, let's keep that line, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just undo this. Okay, so that's it. No, actually, I'll leave that section. manually get it to look okay again. And we can fix that as well while we're at it. Um, as long as we can get these lines to line up. That's all right. That actually looks all right. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to redo the right side, just in case there is a little bit of a little bit of variant. Oh, okay, what have I done? Undo, undo. Ah, uh, you rotten thing. Oh, oh there we go. Got it back. Colors and left control, left click. Ah, okay, make sure you change your radius size and that'll just fix it just so it's a little bit better and takes into account any error that I've made, which I have. And we're going to do the other side. That looks all right. Oh, actually, let's just fix that tail boom. Oh, sorry, the tail. Ah, oh, okay. It's actually done the line through the blades as well, which we don't want. So we can fix that easy enough. And I'm going to go to black. Uh, now they are red. Let me go to black. Oh, that's black, black. He's not there. And oops. Nothing on 
to do. Let's just fix that section there. That looks all right. Still white on the blades. Still there. Yeah. That, 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 and that. Voila. That looks fine. Okay. So that's the first line for our stripe. Bring that back. We're going to line that up again. Now we're going to use the same curve rather than draw a new one because it's in the same general shape already. Uh, now, how thick is that line? It's not, now it's a bit thicker down the start. Now there. Comes up to a bit of a sharp angle like before. And then thins out towards the back. little bit okay and then white gradius one select the front left control left mouse select the next section Select the tail and okay. Now on the other side, let's rotate, make sure that now so we can see. Hasn't done the door. Okay, so take the doors again. Should have done it that time, and it has. So it just it's always worth double checking just to make sure that it has done what you wanted it to do before you move on and go further into the into it uh, right, space. Okay, so that's our lines we need to paint between, and that's going to give us our, oh, okay, actually, before we do that, let's fix up this tail again. Select the tail. Black. Red, 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 red. red. Black. And I'm just fixing up these little bits. And we've got some black on the foils. On the fan blades, I should say. Still got some black on the fan blades. Where are you hiding? Let's move that over. A bit there. A little bit there. Yeah, so as you zoom in, you can see it a lot better. Uh, let's do a bit more. Over there, there, there. And... That's still messy. So there's still white somewhere. That shouldn't be there. There and over there. Yeah, so 
mean, you've got all these little white dots around here that you just need to clean up. It's starting to look a bit better, but there's still a bit of white somewhere on one of the fan blades. And that looks all right. That looks good. Okay, back to what we were doing. So we want white on the right brush and back to the fuselage, left side, texture paint. Texture paint on the level. Zoom that in. Where am I painting? Doors. Make sure it's on the lighter of the orange. If it's on the darker orange, sometimes when you select it, it won't actually work. So just make sure it's, if that's what happens and you for some reason or other can't paint, uh, it's just that it's not actually selected correctly. Okay. So same thing here. Just make sure you do small sections at a time. Don't try and paint that whole line. Just makes it harder if you do make a mistake you have to undo it you're undoing a lot more work uh, a little bit just make it easier and you can see that with the resolution of the um, image files provided by josh the lines look smooth there's no jaggedness to them so they're actually the resolution's quite good from memory i think he's uh by default 4k um, so you can see you do see a bit of jaggedness there but really, when you look at it from that distance, or oh, it looks fine. Okay, I'm going to finish painting this off. And really, as I said, save your project. Make sure you yeah, do, do things in stages. Don't try and rush ahead. Um, that's basically going to be the basis of our aircraft. You can go from there. You can add decals, um, you know, business logos, company logos as stencils. But that's almost ready to export. Uh, there, are, there are other things you can do. You can make your paints metallic, and that's using comp files. So there's a lot more that you can do. Um, you, know, you also need to export this and set up the actual model so that you can put it into Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm not going to cover that in this video. This video is really just some of the, the harder features of using Blender. Uh, that'll do for now. If you do have any questions, reach out, let me know. I hope you got a lot out of this video. Thanks very much.